Nearly a decade ago, a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before, Kitchen Stadium, a giant cooking arena. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. On a to realize his dream, he started choosing the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Roksaburo Michiba. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from all over the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day, using all their senses, skills, creativity, there to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a Challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Every battle, reputations are on the line in Kitchen Stadium, where master chefs pit their artistic creations against each other. What inspiration will today's challenger bring? And how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If my memory serves me correctly, the summer vacation period is now not so far away. And so I thought to myself, this is the perfect timing to have a tag team battle, an idea which has been on my mind for quite a while. This tag team match will have two challengers against two iron chefs. It's a little fantasy battle of mine. We've never had two iron chefs in the kitchen at the same time, so it should be fun. And to make this dream match a success, I think I've found the perfect pair of challengers. Now, let me introduce them. Firstly, the missionary of French cooking in Japan, a bit of a legend called Joël Bruan. And secondly, his top apprentice, whose name is Masafumi Furutaka. Joël Bruan is highly respected as a high priest of French cooking. He's been in the trade since he was just 13. Later, at 19, he joined the kitchen of Paul Bocuse, who is often called the Emperor of French Cuisine. Bocuse quickly recognized Joël's talent for making sauces, and Joël found himself promoted to sous-chef in that highly reputed kitchen at the age of 24. Then, in the early 70s, when Bocuse opened his branch in Japan, Joël was dispatched over to Tokyo to head the kitchen. And not surprisingly, this restaurant quickly became popular. Guests were exposed to genuine French food for the first time, and it marked the dawn of the French cuisine boom in Japan. Very confident in my sauces. Later, at 32, he opened his own place in Minami Aoyama. He named it simply Joel. Then one day, Furutaka knocked on the restaurant's door and asked Joel to take him under his wing. Furutaka, who already had training at some of the top restaurants in Japan, had a strong desire to work under the master who had brushed elbows with Paul Bacuse. And Joel was also quickly impressed by Furutaka's skills and senses. Furutaka-san is a very diligent person. My master has uh, taught me a lot about sauces, so I'm uh, proud of my sauces. Since then, this pair have been working together, realizing their ideals jointly on the same plates. I see no compromise in their work whatsoever. Dishes jointly created by Joel and Furutaka are strongly influenced by Paul Bocuse's recipes. They have truly artistic flavor and presentation. Their teamwork in the kitchen and their understanding of each other perfect the dishes, heightening them to extraordinary levels. Now, Joel and Furutaka, with your perfected coordination in the kitchen, show us the flavors of the great Paul Bacuse and win if you can. Me as his right-hand man, we'll win. No doubt, uh, we'll win.
Another of the chairman's ideas about to be realized, a pair of challengers battling a pair of iron chefs. The first time to have that and joining us today for this occasion is actress Kazuko Kato. Welcome to the show. My pleasure. Your lucky day, Kato-san. You'll get to enjoy the cooking of four chefs today. Yes, I know. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. All right. And we've got our commentator, Dr. Yukio Hattori. Always a pleasure. Okay. Time now to bring him on, Chairman Kaga. この対決をいつか実現させたいと私は思っていました。そして迎えた初めての夏休み期間、今しかないと私は確信しました。選んだ二人はフランス料理界の大物。フレンチの皇帝と名高いあのポールボギューズの愛弟子です。しかも。大物と呼ぶにふさわしい要素は他にもあります。さあ、皆さん大きな拍手でお迎えください。二人合わせて250キロの超大物シェフ、ジョエルブリアン、そしてフルタガマサフミ。And here they come, a heavyweight pair if there ever was. Big men, imposing statures, entering the stadium. Rouen and Furutaka, a ton of French cuisine expertise will be on display today. 実に素晴らしい体格ですね。え、この厨房はお二人には狭くありませんか？いつファイン。それでは例によって我が美食アカデミーが誇る三人の鉄人を登場させましょう。よみがえるがいい。アイアンシェ。Making their ascent in this ethereal atmosphere and assuming their rightful places in Kitchen Stadium are the men who time and time again break new ground in their chosen cuisines while defending their turf, your Iron Chefs. Iron Chef Chinese Chen Kenichi, Iron Chef French Hiroyuki Sakai, and Iron Chef Japanese Roksaburo Michiba. Here they stand, the invincible men of culinary skills. <laughs> Alright, Michiba and Chen it is. The challengers deliberately bypassing Iron Chef French Sakai. So Michiba and Chen will be the dynamic duo of Iron Chefs. Michiba, who's always maintained an explorative outlook on Japanese cuisine. Iron Chef Chinese Chen, the Sejuan Sage. Together, they will battle the French cuisine challengers. Men used to going at it solo, but today they'll team up. We'll see how they handle it. あれに決めました。夏のあれは。タイに劣らないほどの高級魚。その名の由来通り、涼しげな白身を和洋中同料理されるか非常に楽しみです。それでは発表します。今日のテーマはこれです。Sea bass. If my memory serves me correctly, speaking of the best sea bass in summer, there is a saying that goes like this. Good sea bass makes a rainbow on sashimi. This means when served raw, one will see a rainbow on the pieces of sashimi prepared by a top chef because they're so delicately and finely sliced. If you let the apprentices touch it, the surface will not be delicate enough to keep the flavor inside, and more importantly, there will be no rainbow to look at. So with sea bass, remember, find the rainbow on sashimi. 
high-powered chefs, two sides going at it in a doubles match. Braun and his right-hand man, Furutaka, taking on Iron Chef's Chen and Michiba. French, Japanese, and Chinese dishes will abound. What a treat. The stage is set, so let's get it on. All it crazy. Bang a gong, we are on the sea bass battle. Strictly a doubles affair as the men get up to the stand to select the fish. And another note, there will be no assistants working in the kitchen today. The chefs are on their own for this one. This is very exciting. Especially with fresh in-season sea bass. Yeah, definitely. So what can we look forward to? Well, this is a, uh, one of the rare white meat fish yes. during the summer here in Japan. And flatfish and sea bass are actually about the only white fish you should be eating in the summer. They are it. Yeah, but as far as sea bass goes, this is actually the best season for it. It has a lot of fat on it right now. All right, Chen and Michiba apparently discussing who will do what. But on the other side, it is master and apprentice, his top one, so they should be more comfortable working together. But Chen and Michiba looks like they're in agreement there. Yeah, I heard Michiba saying that he'll be making some Japanese dishes and Chen San will make some Chinese dishes. Not exactly earth shattering news no, there. No, exactly. <laughs> and meanwhile, the challengers, they're already uh, rinsing the fish, you can see here. Okay. And it's very interesting to see that they're, they're using scissors to do this. Mm, yeah. That's okay, kind of scissors cool. to clean it. And Furutaka, no surprise to see he's the one doing the dirty work. Yeah. Anyway, Doc, sea bass is popular in French cooking, right? Yeah, it's one of the best uh, white meat fish in, in French cuisine. Sure. Okay. Oh. And flatfish is also available, but, but sea bass is actually considered better. All right, so that explains that wide smile Braun had on his face when the theme was unveiled today. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, he was all smiles. And a look of confidence. And when Furutaka picked up on that, he too was exhibiting an air of confidence. So they are feeling pretty good on that side. Right now in the Fukuzana. early going. Yes, go ahead from the floor, Shinichiro Ota. I just got word on the strategy that the Iron Chefs have decided on today. Each one of them will complete their dishes separately, but for the sake of order, Michiba-san will be in charge of overseeing the course as a whole. All right, Michiba, the mm. executive producer, if you will. That's right. But the men will be cooking individually, Iron Chefs Chen and Michiba. Might want to keep our eyes open to see if they attempt to make any dishes of a hybrid nature. Dishes containing elements of both Japanese and Chinese cooking as Michiba now returning to the site of the action. A little spring in his step. Yeah, and you notice the challengers here. They're dicing the sea bass meat and mincing some prawns, so maybe this is for a moose. Mm. All right, and setting it up with the food processor they are as Michiba getting down and dirty right here. Yeah, what he's doing is getting rid of the gills, and after this, there are many ways to actually use the head, like salt grill things like that. All right, sounds good. Yeah. And I have to assume that we'll be seeing at least one raw sashimi dish from the Iron Chefs. That's that's a good point. Yeah, I imagine that we will see that. Absolutely. That's basically the heart and soul of Japanese cooking using this fish. All right, from the soul man of Japan, Iron Chef Japanese Michiba. Oh, menu ready? No, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind, sorry. Nope, just a few paper towel sheets. <laughs> Nothing too exotic okay, there okay. by the Iron Chef. <laughs> Fukuzan? Yes. Yeah, I asked Michiba-san what happened to his ritual writing down of the menu, and he said, hey, I don't think we have time for rituals today. He didn't even look up when answering. <laughs> all right, and working without the usual pair of assistants, got to do all the heavy lifting themselves, and now the Iron Chef Chinese, what's he got there? Uh, grapes, I believe. Yes, sir. Just peeling some grapes there. That's it. Okay, getting dessert started early. <laughs> I guess, oh, no. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, from Michiba-san, I turned to Chan-san, and just happened to overhear him say to himself, hey, I've got the easy job today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Ota, uh, I don't know if you like that word getting out. Chen, the easier job, huh? And now the challenger side, challengers, plural, Braun leaning on that food processor. And this is the moose, as we mentioned before. Okay, with sea bass meat and, um, and the prawns in there. And prawns, and not for dessert. No, and some <laughs> eggs to kind of bind it together. All right. Masafumi Furutaka and Joel Barra, more than a combined 500 pounds tipping the scales. And you see him peeling the skin right now? Yeah. I think he'll be putting this in a croot, which, which is... is um, well, it's safe to say that his master, Paul Bocuse, is the inventor of this dish. It's a pie crust dish. It's wonderful, and I think that's what we're seeing here. Packed in a pie. Yeah, and the moose will be stuffed in with it. The wow. moose stuffed in this one here. That is what I'm guessing right now. All yep. right, pretty early, early call. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> And now piercing these pieces with skewers and onto some broiling, perhaps? Perhaps, yeah. Not going to call that one yet? I'm not too sure on this one yet, no. <laughs> All right. And now Iron Chef Chen, he's over a food processor that's whirring yeah. away. Yeah, they're doing the same over there. Same stuff inside on this side? It could be exactly the same, actually. Okay, and they had uh, sea bass and prawns, did the challengers, but can't tell right here. No, but they, they do look similar similar in terms of, of direction. Yeah. All right, yes. Just for your information, the challenger team says they are planning three dishes today. 
Two guys, but just three dishes. Oh, no, are they gonna use this cutter? Uh, well, this is normally for a pudding. Well, he's got the stuff from the processor right beside it. Yeah. Now, if they pour that stuff in, there goes your call. Uh -oh. It gets blown right out of the water there, uh -oh. and there it goes. Uh -oh. Oh. Okay, um, can I get a second opinion, or give a second opinion? Of course, huh? Yes, go ahead, Ota. Yeah, a side note from the Iron Chef side, without any assistance, uh, Michiba-san seems to be a little perplexed, if not totally lost, as to how to use the salamander oven, something that he usually doesn't have to bother with. Unbelievable, oh. he is out of touch. <laughs> and what's, what's he up to right he, here? He's boiling the skin? Just the skin? Yeah, you're right. And that's a very good idea, actually. The skin by itself tastes great. Uh -huh. All right, the Iron Chef Japanese. And fukui -san. Yes. Yeah, as Hattori-san suspected, the challengers are now preparing a big pie sheet. Uh-huh, you see? You oh. see? Oh, good, good. So, again, as mentioned, they're going to stuff that in there. Okay, and underneath? Uh, the pie sheet goes underneath. Okay. And then they'll use another big one to cover it all up. All the way around. Yeah, and I think they're going to make it into the shape of a fish. I, I would pretty much guarantee that. All right, good for you. You got that part. Okay, now what's going on here? But no moose. Uh, okay. Well, I'd put it in if I were them. That's <laughs> well, yes, we understand that. But uh, Baran thing, and Furutaka, thing, yeah. they've got other ideas. On. Yes. I interviewed Chef Furutaka and asked him about their strategy today, and he said, I'm just leaving that to my mentor, Master Chef Joe. Well, but he may have been a little too nonchalant in the early going, and he seems to be behind in the prep work that he was assigned to, and now he's pressed for time. Back to you. Okay. All right, thanks, Ota. As they trim the pie sheets there, hearing some and uh, some bright percussive sounds over there. Yeah, that's Chan San. He's beating something. Eggs? In attack mode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's white. No. Oh, okay, a meringue. All right. So this would be for dessert. And then. there are the grapes and something else there, but just how does sea bass work its way in? Actually, I was going to ask oh. you that. Mm. <laughs> sea bass for dessert? <laughs> that ought to get that. your attention. Yeah, fish dessert, different. All right, now Michiba, the Iron Chef, struggling over there with the broiler. Telling Ota earlier, admitting that he's not totally on top of that. Uh, going to remove the ones that he had skewered. Let's see. No, they're gonna go right back in. Fukuzan. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, we just witnessed Iron Chef Michiba scrambling to save the grilled pieces in the oven, which he noticed that were getting a little too overcooooked burnt, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, boy. <laughs> Gonna remove the ones that he had skewered? No, still need more. They go Fukuzan. back in. Yes. Yeah, we just witnessed Iron Chef Michiba scrambling to save the grilled pieces in the oven, which he noticed were getting a little too overcooked, burnt, actually. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my. Oh, my. No, this has got to be tough without assistance. I mean, for these battles, they really rely on their assistance. Yeah. Now back to the challengers. Some very nice decorative Look work here. Look at him here. even going so far as to put some scale patterns on it. <laughs> and after baking, this is going to look awesome, and it's going to be very good as well. Joel Bruon, he among the first French chefs to introduce the genuine article, Authentic French Cooking in Japan. Chairman Kaga even called him a missionary of French cooking in this country. And now here on slow-mo replay. You know, that's an amazing thing. It actually looks like one of those big fish that you see in the aquarium. But this will <laughs> taste better. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. All right, they've mm. got it into the oven. Yep. And what would be the temperature time settings for this? Uh, I'm guessing about 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. All right. So. Yeah. And uh, now the mousse in the mold has gone into the oven as well. Really? Yeah, that's gone in in the mold. They, they should put that in the fish. <laughs> All right. Anyway, both are in separately. And now some filleted pieces of sea bass in a marinade, I think. Yeah, he's marinating them. All right. Mm. Now back with Chen and what's, some wok action. Yeah, what's this? Looks like some uh, dollops of his paste being fried or boiled. Fukuzan? Yes. These dumplings were made from the mixture that was in the food processor a few minutes ago that you were wondering about with egg whites added. All right, thanks, Ota. So they haven't used the grapes yet? Uh, not that I know of, no. Okay, and I think I saw some lychee as well. All right, well, that's what was with the grapes. Now back to the challengers. Oh, truffles here. They've got truffles as we head into the second half. 30 minutes left. Okay, I see. They're making paragou sauce. Paragou sauce. Yeah, with I'm the pretty truffles. sure of that. Yeah, okay. it's paragou sauce. You know, I'm starting to lose my confidence here. I'm, I don't want to <laughs> go out on a limb. All right. Well, we have seen this sauce before in previous battles. Oh, it's amazing. The mother of all sauces. And we'll have it today. Mm. Fukuzan. Yes. Yeah, I have a correction to my previous report concerning the dumplings Chen San was frying. He tells me that the lychee and the muscat grapes are in fact already in there. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. So the grapes were in. In oh. the mix, which should have sea bass as well. That's that's a nice idea. Hmm. Okay, very interesting approach. And now here's Michiba. What's he got here? Adding some edible kelp, is it? He was chopping it up earlier, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, okay. he was really getting down. 
So what's he going to do then? What's up? A load of chopped up fish Steaming there. Steaming it? Oh yeah, it looks yes, like it. Yes, into yeah. the steamer. Still a little too early to tell. Kuzan! Go ahead. We finally found out how many dishes each Iron Chef is responsible for. Michiba is making three, Chen San is making two. All right, that'd make five for the Iron Chef's team. Okay, now what was that going in there? Tomato puree. Oh, okay. Oh, so this is easy. This is uh, sauce Sharon for sure. For it's, sure. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great <laughs> sauce for white fish. Maybe for the sea bass pie? Uh, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta <laughs> believe. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, an interesting observation of Joel Buran. Before the battle, he was all smiles, speaking very fluent Japanese, but since the gong went off, he's only been speaking incredibly fast French, and our staff members don't have a clue as to what he's saying to them. <laughs> uh -oh. Heat of the battle. Gotta think and move fast, and as long as Furutaka understands what the man's saying, that's all mm. that counts. And Fukuzan? Yes. Yeah, Chef Furutaka is still having a hard time keeping up with the frantic pace of his master mentor. I caught him mumbling to him himself. What have I gotten myself into? What was I thinking? <laughs> well, both men are working up quite a, a sweat. And look at Furutaka. He's not lagging behind in the perspiration department. In fact, I think he's even out dripping his master. Boy, someone hand that man a towel over there. Man alive. Now back with Iron Chef Chen. Now these are the innards? Yeah, the sea bass innards. You're okay, right. Okay, and a little separation effort there. Mm -hmm. Now, how would Chen uh, would be? How would he be using these sea bass innards? I'm thinking salt curing it, like uh, Uruka using sweet fish. All right, pretty labor intensive. And now Michiba, and look, what what is he doing here? These these are the pieces, I believe, that he was broiling. Yeah, I think this is telling me that he's going to be serving them just all together on a big plate. They're all in, in a pile right there, mm -hmm. and then just dish them out come tasting time. Exactly. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right, back with the challenges and another sauce, a green one that Bron working with? Yeah, exactly. No, or wait a minute. Oh, hang on, I'm putting it Oh, it's a soup. Okay, not a sauce, but a soup. Oh. Okay. So they've got two sauces plus this one, which will be a soup. Right, okay. All right, and check it out there. <laughs> yeah, look at that color. A spark of inspiration, <laughs> colorful decoration. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, this is food coloring. All right, good to know. Mm, I think the challenges team really have the edge today. The Iron Chefs never work together like this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Kato Sanya might have a point there. Don't really mm. seem to have gotten into a rhythm yet. You know? Yeah, I mean, the challenges are working very efficiently. This is their everyday style working mm. together. Yeah, they, they do have a definite flow there. And on the other side, the two Iron Chefs with no assistance, individual efforts, individual dishes, but in the end, will the final product have a degree of unity or cohesiveness? That's what we're going to find out. Well, we'll have to wait and see how complementary these two streams of cooking will be with each other. But, you know, like both these chefs are, are great, so the end result is going to be fine. Oh, yeah, the, sure. the dishes should taste great, I agree, but uh, just outside of 10 minutes left, and I wonder about the concept of combining the output of two separate approaches. You know, Doc, you talked mm. about the flow earlier of the working arrangement on the challenger right. side. Every meal in here made by a challenger or an iron chef, at least the, the good ones, have a certain flow to them. And the challengers with their well-coordinated four dishes, the, the pie, the mousse, the marinated one, and the soup, they should have the edge there. Yeah, and you'll notice that Michiba-san's using a gourd or Chinese winter melon Yes. There, and adding some chicories too, okay, I think. Okay, a so, certain visual appeal, the beginning of something there. So what's going on top of this? How about sea bass? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, in what form? <laughs> well, that is the question, as Chen now looks to be working on a spicy Szechuan dish here. Uh, how do you know that? It's not spicy yet. There's nothing on it. <laughs> You're going too fast for yourself hey, here. Look, it, it's on the way coming from him. <laughs> Trust me. Now, Furutaka and... Uh, uh, lemon. Okay. okay. Uh, painted lemon. Challengers now onto the decoration of their dishes, running well ahead of the Iron Chefs. But the Iron Chefs, uh, hey, no sweat for Ten them. Ten minutes to go. Oh, Ten okay. minutes left now. Michiba, his pace is deliberately slowed. And out of the steamer, those are the chopped up pieces of sea bass zooming in on Fukuzan? them. Yes. Yeah, I approached Joel Bran a moment ago and inquired as to whether or not they were going to make it on time. And with a big smile on his face, he said, we'll be just fine. <laughs> all right, all smiles. Joel Bruan, full of confidence, didn't try to bite off more than they could chew. The pair of French cuisine heavyweights have been working hard but under control, and they're going to bring in their four dishes on time and bring them in just the way they wanted them. Something tells me it's the Iron Chefs who are having a bit of a trouble with clock management. Mm. No assistance, working separately on their own. It's foreign territory for these two. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and look at this here. Fukuzan. Steamed dish yeah. and kelp. Yes, go ahead, Ota. Yeah, I mentioned to Chen Son that he has less than 10 minutes to go, and he grimaced and said, mm, it's gonna be close. <laughs> All right, Iron Chef Chen, and look, he's picked up the pace, working the walk. 
Little taste test there, and he's also broken a sweat. Meantime, Furutaka. Got the moose. All right now, and trying to get that out of the mold, and it's still not coming out that easily. Still stuck actually. in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's sticking to the inside. Now, how, how do you get out of this sticky situation? <laughs> I mean, you know, how do you how do you get that off? Uh, just the patience, I guess, because you don't want to damage it. So. I'm sure they applied butter or something to the mold. Oh, I'm I'm sure they did, but you can see the moose uh, didn't yeah. really come up oh, clean there. Uh -huh. Too bad. Oh, so they, I think they'll pour the perigou sauce over this. The perigou? The one uh, with the truffles, yeah. Right, okay. That's, that's what I'm guessing. Well, I think so, too. Yeah? Yeah, okay. absolutely. All absolutely. right, thank you. Sure. <laughs> okay, and moving over to there. Yes, oh, there okay, it is. Okay, there we go. Uh, huh? You're validated. Right, we got Fukuzan. it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I told Challenger Joel that we all noticed their moose didn't come out cleanly, but he said, hey, what does that have to do with the flavor? <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> you know, actually, Furutaka managed a fairly serviceable salvage job on it, and now Michiba, what's he got here? Uh, the ginkgo nuts. And, he, and he's putting them in yeah. over there into these. Um, oh, here it comes. Look at this. Oh, wow. The seed bass pie coming out and Beautiful. coming at you. Five minutes left. Whoa. God bless you, Iron <laughs> Chef Michiba. Someone hand him a hanky. And what a great looking sea bass pie, mm. courtesy of the challengers there. Oh, amazing, Jeez. isn't it? It looks fantastic. Oh, here it comes. Look at that. The sea bass pie coming out and coming wow. at you right there. Five minutes go. left. Oh. Whoa! God bless you, Iron Chef Michiba. Someone hand him a hanky. Okay, and, but what a great looking sea bass pie, courtesy of the challengers right there. Delicious. It looks fantastic. Turned out absolutely perfect. Didn't you know, it? it almost looks like it's come right out of the water. <laughs> it yeah. And it just fits perfectly on that plate. Look at that. Yes, a perfect fit. Mm. Oh, that's gorgeous. Now, you can say this is one of the symbolic French dishes, like using this fish. Sea bass pie, Bruan and Furutaka, gotta be proud of that one. And now back to the Iron Chef's chin, deep frying. Yeah, some potato strings here. And that almost looks like a nest. Yeah, I think that'll be for a plate. For the stir fry, could be? Yeah, it's looking like the swallow's nest. Okay, so and... Uh, I'm guessing there. sashimi for Okay, this. raw sea bass slices onto a platform of gourd. Mm-hmm. That's one of the efforts by Michiba. That looks great. Three minutes, to Three minutes left. Braun now challenge aside, plating the marinated sea bass right here. Fukuzan! Yes. With just three minutes to go, for the first time, Joel san sounds pressed for time. He's shouting, hurry, hurry! Hearing the three minute call, that got the blood pumping. But based on what we've seen on their side, I don't think they'll have any problem coming in, hmm, unlike the other side. <laughs> Chen and Michiba, they are the ones who look to really be up against it time wise. Chen is still chopping away with two and a half minutes to go. A pair of Iron Chefs working together for the first time in Kitchen Stadium in a doubles match against a pair of French cuisine heavyweights. And it's been quite a while for us to see Iron Chefs frantically scrambling around the kitchen in the final minutes of a battle. Usually it's on the challenger side where panic sets in, but even Michiba is somewhat in scramble mode. Right. Well, he's got four dishes down already. Mm -hmm. All right, there is the stir fry. Oh, the Szechuan dish. Chen unloading his Szechuan stir fry, scooping it all out down mm. onto a nest of deep fried interlocking shoestring potatoes and there goes the perigou sauce by Ooh. the challengers and how do you like it a oh, reservoir of perigou sauce in the center of that yeah. mousse oh, it's gorgeous isn't it mm. right as you said doc the king of sauces as joel braun said in the pregame he's totally confident about his sauce making abilities the marinated dish it also looks to be done and no problem finishing up a short but sweet set of three plus a soup Meantime, Michiba and Chen again, perhaps first time to see them pushing like this at the end of a battle, about a buck and a half on the clock. Michiba said he'd make three Chen two dishes as the Iron Chef Chinese scurries to and fro all over the kitchen. Look at that, a hop and a skip right there. Iron Chef on the run, trying to finish the last dish. Now, is this one the dessert? Is that what it looks like? Uh, Unbelievable. Oh, wow. No way of imagining what that would taste like if, it, in fact, it is the dessert. And look at these guys. They've got it all under control, working on their presentation, even able to clean up a few things. We've got under a minute to go. The final 55 seconds counting down. Chen and Michiba, no time right now for them to get it together, presentation-wise. They've got bigger, more important fish to fry right now. Baran and his right-hand man, Furutaka, his top apprentice, they've burned up a lot of calories over the course of this battle 
bottle, lost a lot of fluid too, but their to efforts go. have produced a fabulous looking set of dishes. Soups on, going down there onto a piece of sea bass. Yeah, it looks like an egg soup. Wow. Looks very inviting with the steam coming mm. off that one. That'll get your mouth a watering. <laughs> egg flavored soup with sea bass, steam rising. Perhaps the Iron Chefs, the team of Michiba and Chen, Ten biting off more than they could handle today. Challenger side, two men, two French cuisine heavyweights Five working seconds. together on all their dishes. Three, a game plan two, which has served them well. One. The final seconds tick down and that's it. The sea bass battle is over. So how do you feel you did during that hour? So, so I think. One hour, yes, for French cooking is a bit uh, short. Of course. I've never done it in a time frame like that, and uh -huh. we usually take our time. Uh. Uh, a bit too short for French cooking. Uh, did our best, uh, pulled it off. And Furutaka-san? As my master said, it was very frantic. Okay. Any thoughts or comments about working together for the first time, Michiba-san? Well, we didn't have a whole lot of time to plan things. We right, more yeah. Time. And your dishes? Well, this should be okay, right? Well, balance-wise, <laughs> you know. I mean, uh, he told me uh, what he was doing, dishes. so uh, I concentrated on a variety of flavors. I made one spicy one, for example. And yeah, I right? uh, made one raw dish. Yeah, raw. So you're confident? Mm, yeah, I'm confident, yes. And you, Chen-san? Huh? Me? Yeah, <laughs> you know me. I did my best. Okay. <laughs> Challengers Baran and Furutaka are offering four dishes. First, chilled sea bass and basil and oil sauce. Marinating the sea bass in the lemon and oil sauce accentuates the flavor of both the filet and the skin. Second, sea bass mousse with truffle sauce. The mousse is made from a paste of sea bass and prawns, egg white and fresh cream, but it's the paragou sauce with truffles that heightens this delicate dish. Sea bass soup, Provence style, taking a good fish stock from the bones, then adding sea bass filets seasoned by olive oil and white wine. Last is sea bass pie, their pièce de résistance. One whole fish enclosed in a pie crust with firm and tasty sea bass meat under the artfully made crust. It's enjoyed with the wonderful Charon sauce made from tomato paste and wine vinegar. Iron Chefs Michiba and Chen are offering five dishes. First, chilled sea bass sashimi served atop a bowl made from a winter melon slice. The cured plum and wasabi sauce is a marvelous match with the elegant texture of the sea bass. Salt grilled sea bass, broiled skewered pieces of sea bass with the skin having a great crispy texture, the feature Michiba wanted to emphasize. Stir fried sea bass and vegetables, Chen skills going into this dish, seasoned with Chinese rice wine, hot bean sauce, and even some salt cured sea bass innards. Sea bass stew, the only cooperative effort, blending Japanese and Chinese flavors in the soup. The hot bean sauce and citrus juice find a surprising harmony in the joint creation. Last for dessert, lychee and muscat in sea bass dumpling. It's the syrup with egg yolk that gently ties together the ingredients inside. A stadium-shaking entrance by a pair of French chefs who will battle a pair of iron chefs. Joel Bruon, a French cuisine missionary to Japan, and his right-hand man, his top apprentice, Masafumi Furutaka, an imposing duo. They'll battle the dynamic duo of iron chef Japanese Roksaburo Michiba and iron chef Chinese Chen Kenichi. Chairman Kaga unveils the theme. Summer's here and the time is right for the white meat of sea bass. Truly a collaborative effort, the challengers produce a superb looking set of four dishes. The iron chefs divvy up the work, the dishes, and finish just on time with the set of five. And now the moment of truth, tasting and judgment for the sea bass battle. On the panel today are former lower house member Shinichiro Kurimoto, actress Kazuko Kato, actress Mayuko Takata, and Rosanjin scholar Masaaki Hirano. First, the dishes of challengers Buran and Furutaka. I wanted more time to chill this perfectly, uh, but we did our best. Mmm, good. The texture is perfect in this. I like it a lot, and the sauce, it's so refreshing. The skin is so delicious. Yeah. How do you say? It's the same in texture as seaweed, almost jelly-like. It's very well, the skin is tender and very nicely done. I can't believe this is fish. 
And I like this sauce very much. A flavor from the past, like fish cakes, but so elegant, like a lady. And you know what's sea bass? <laughs> uh, truffles? They're doing their job. I've never had anything this good. I've never had anything like this. This needed a bit more impact. With a little more salt added, I think it would have had a little more depth of flavor. It's a little vague. Ah. You held back too much. As you say, it is a little mm. bit too oily. A little bit oily. If we had more time, I want to do more to the bouillon, uh, but I just needed more time to draw the saltiness in the ingredients uh, like this. Uh, time, I see. Yes, for French cooking, uh, one hour is a... Uh, 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 bit too yes. short. Baran and Furutaka with the honor of serving their sea bass pie. They chose to stay on the mainstream of French cooking in uh, dealing with this fish dish. This is what cooking is all about, maintaining the original form, the beauty and shape of the fish, which is great. It's lovely to look at, and of course, even more pleasant after tasting it. And now up the dishes of Iron Chef's Michiba and Chen. Well, within a time frame, we managed to pull things together, I think. Well, a combination of flavors. I mean, after a sashimi, what would be nice? After discussions like that, we just went off working by ourselves on each part of the menu, you see? It was pretty good sea bass. This filet is so firm and tasty. Yeah. You used a gourd for a bowl to avoid the sea bass sashimi making direct contact with, with the ice. This speaks of their great wisdom in preparing this right, maintaining the natural flavor of the fish. I'm impressed with your idea. Oh, it's so nice to grill it like this. I tried the skin and it's so crispy. It's very yeah. tasty. The order was Japanese, Japanese then Chinese. After a mild dish, it's so nice to have a spicy dish. Chen San's expertise in his spicy dishes is well expressed in the overall flow. By making this stir fry spicy, it almost makes it resemble a chicken dish. It's so firm. Sea bass stew made together, they'll serve it together. May I add broth? Oh, yes, yes, please. How many spoonfuls? Three big spoonfuls. Three? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> wow, it's citrus juice, soy, hot bean sauce, and you know, the body of this soup, I'm out of words to describe it. What, Japan shakes hands with China? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> this is extraordinary. A great soup, I'd say. Well, it seems so soft. It's like a very dainty ladylike dessert. You can do this only with mild whitefish meat, cleverly wrapping up the fruit. So skilled. Each of them were all wonderful, unique, artistic, and creative, but uh, I didn't really sense a thread tying them all together here. I enjoyed the change of flavors from dish to dish. It was very stimulating. I liked it. And blending the Japanese and Chinese flavors was very interesting. Doubles match, only a single team can win. Which duo gets the verdict? Today, a challenger's team weighing in at over 500 pounds, French cuisine heavyweights bent on flattening a pair of iron chefs. Challengers Baran and Furutaka exhibiting skills, dynamic moves, not just their size, but their stature dominating this kitchen. Iron chefs Chen and Michiba competing in a most unfamiliar environment, able to rely only on themselves and each other. Could they find the way? Who takes it? Whose cuisine reigns supreme? Joel!
Furutaka. It's the challengers. Incredible. Buran and Furutaka. Yes, they have rolled over the Iron Chefs. First doubles match in Kitchen Stadium and victory going to the challengers. With their collaborative effort on the sea bass dishes, they're able to waltz out of here with the win. Even the Iron Chefs applaud the accomplishment of Joel Bruan and Masafumi Furutaka.